guys, I'm Leanna Rupert. I am an associate editor at Game Informer and back for another video. This one is not talking about butts. Sorry. Apologies in advance. Uh, but I did want to talk about something that I get a lot and we recently talked about on the Game Informer podcast and that's how to get into this industry. A big question that I get is how did I get started? Because I've been in this industry and I say this in every video as a disclaimer. It's not a brag thing. It's a so you know that when I'm talking about anything game related or industry related that it's coming from a place of experience, not just talking what I think I know. Um, but a lot of people ask me like, how did you get into it? Where did, how did you get where you are today? You know, I've worked with big brand. I, I was in charge of the relaunch of Prima Games. I was in charge of the gaming division at, uh, at CBS, which included comicbook.com. I've worked with, you know, a plethora of big properties through my career. I've also got um, I have my first developer credit. I worked in PR. I've also worked at marketing, which is why sometimes I spout off on Twitter. It's a hard habit to break. <laughs> Very hard habit to break. And, um, you know, I just, I've kind of worked in a lot of different positions within this industry. And so I thought I would make a video because a lot of times when this discussion is coming up, it's told only from the perspective of a writer. Uh, and that's not all there is. Like, if you know, don't go to game dev school or coding's not your thing. There's a plethora, and I'm gonna keep saying that word, take a shot every time you hear it. Don't do that. Um, of other positions within that don't require you to know coding or know actual development. There's so many hands in this pot. So anyways, but I will primarily talk mostly about journalism, but we'll branch out through the conversation. So for me, the first thing I want to say, and this is a very honest disclaimer because I've noticed that this kind of gets left out a lot because nobody wants to admit it for some reason, but there are a lot of skill set things that you need to get in the industry. But what people aren't talking about is also you need just a shit ton of luck. A lot of times when people get into the industry or into the positions that they love, a lot of it is their skill, their portfolio, what they can show that they bring to value. But a lot of it is also knowing the right person, being at the right place at the right time. I remember I got an interview with Henry Cavill and, uh, or I can't ever say his name, and the Witcher cast because I accidentally spilled coffee all over him. Um, you know, there's just weird luck that comes into getting in the industry and continuing your, your career path. So if you are, and I say this mostly too, because I know some people are gonna watch this that have been already trying to get in the industry, for X amount of time and may start to feel like, is it ever gonna happen for me? Oh my God, like what am I doing wrong? And you might not be doing anything wrong. You might not have just hit that luck stride, but that will happen. It just, sometimes it happens really quickly and sometimes it happens not so quickly. Like for me, I worked years for free until I finally got a high, like a paying position, a stable position in this industry. And I ha obviously had my portfolio to show to that because again, I've been working for years for free, but a lot of it too was just, I didn't know who I was talking to at the time. I'm Southern, I'm from New Orleans originally. I'm in Chicago now, but I'm in New Orleans from originally. So I just like to talk to people and I love to engage and learn more about them. It's just what I do. And um, I didn't realize who I was talking to at the time. And that resulted in me getting a job uh, through CBS. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. There's things obviously you can do to position yourself in a good position, but don't discount that of feeling like you're wrong or you're doing something incorrectly because a, a lot of it is, is relying on stuff that's honestly just beyond your control. So now that that is out of the way, the first thing I can say is if you're looking to write or work in this industry, media side, um, that includes video, voiceover, script writing, guides work, whatever. There's one thing you need to know, and it's a common misconception that we all get, and kind of why we're getting a little frustrated, because there's a very big crunch problem in this industry, um, both developer side and media side, and I can get into that here in a little bit, but the misconception is, oh, you work, you're a writer, oh, you just play video games all day. Fuck, I wish. <laughs> like, there's so many times where I'm just burnt out, and I don't even want to play my favorite games, because I'm just burnt out by the end of the day and I just want to sleep or read a book or get just get away from a, a screen or a monitor. Um, so you have to know going in that it's so much more. Do you play games? Absolutely. We review games. We do demos of games. We interview games while doing hands-on. Like obviously you can't be in the gaming industry and not play games, but that is only a part of the job overall, the job scope. So knowing that going in, 
you need to know that there is actual hard work that's invested. I cannot tell you how many times I actually started a website called don'tdothegamers.com and I started this years ago and the whole reason I started it was because I have worked, like I said, I've worked at a lot of jobs. I've worked at many, too many sites to count at this point. And I've been working 18, you know, 18 years now. Uh, this year makes 18 years. Um, and I've had the best bosses. Like right now, I am the happiest I've ever been in my career. Uh, they, people at Game Informer really take care of us. And I've had the worst bosses. Bosses to the point where they are in legal trouble. And I wanted to create a safe space for people wanting to get in the industry as a chance for one, to build their portfolio under mentorship, how to search for stories, how to source, how to cite, how to engage with developers and PR for interviews. This is to build up their, their value in terms of the market. Uh, and also a safe place, a safe place where they can feel heard. They have the freedom to explore other angles, freedom to explore features. I just wanted it to be safe. And uh, while the first launch definitely had hiccups, I was still learning um, how, what kind of a leader I was, which thankfully I finally hammered it down. There was a lot of stress because I actually invested all of my life savings into that. So there was a lot of stress, but we found our groove. We have a really good, you know, I'm not associated with anymore, obviously because of Game Informer contractually, I can't be but my husband still runs it and he, um, a good group of people over there. But the big point was I wanted to give them a chance to build up a portfolio so that when they do apply for, you know, higher paying gigs, they have something to show. Like I know what, you, how to do what you're looking for. So the first thing you're going to do is if, especially if you're looking to go in the writing side is to just start, uh, a lot. I just start. <laughs> And if you don't know how to write or you've had no mentorship, I would recommend, you know, think, think hard. What made you want to be a writer? Is there a particular website that you favor? Is there a particular journalist that you're like, I like their writing style. I feel like I resonated with it well. Follow them. Follow them on social media and see how they engage within the market with publishers and with developers, with other journalists. That's going to give you an inside bird's view eye of just how it works, how the whole system works. This will also, too, if you are interested, reach out to them. A lot of them will offer mentorship. I offer mentorship. Right now, I'm currently a little bit overwhelmed because I took on a little bit more than I could at the time, but I know a lot of fellow journalists are also offering mentorship. However, if you reach out and they say, I simply can't do this at the time, you have to respect that because there's a lot that goes into this job that people don't see, and you don't want to pester them because the industry is very small, and you don't want to start off your journey on the wrong foot because they, you know, if you're coming after developers or coming after writers, they do remember that and everybody talks. <laughs> it's like high school sometimes. Um, so anyways, I, you know, find a mentorship. If you can't, or if you feel comfortable enough in your own writing, start a blog, uh, start a medium. Um, back in my day, <laughs> my mother, uh, I started a live journal and I know Alana Pierce, she's uh, no longer on the media side. She works at uh, Santa Monica now working on God of War 2, but she got her start, you know, she was going to school for journalism, but she technically got her writing start on Tumblr. And that's where a lot of people met her. So there's no, there's no wrong way to start writing. The important thing is you just start. Um, also, when you've built up enough credible pieces, hyperlinking, structure, citations, these are all very important. And these are mechanical things about a writing piece that hiring managers are looking for. So once you feel a little bit com more comfortable, like, okay, I, I found my voice now, reach out with pitches to as many outlets as you can. And don't look, you know, have your eyes bigger than your capability. You know, don't be like, it's IGN or nothing, or Game Informer or nothing. You know, no site is too big, no site is too small. And a lot of smaller sites are fan-driven sites that don't necessarily have a budget but where they can't, and this is not me, you know, advocating for free labor by any means, but if you're learning, trying to learn, and you're trying to find that mentorship environment, these smaller websites, uh, you know, revenue driven, so there is obviously an pay, but develop your style under guidance, because the thing about keeping it just self-reliant is you're not going to keep learning because you're working within your scope of your knowledge, so you can't learn what you don't know. 
you know what I mean? When you're just writing reliantly. So when you work for a smaller site or a bigger site, you're working under an editor that can help you with your structure. They can help you find your voice. They can help you with the more grammatical issues, but do that and get the, your objective, honestly, be as right, write as much as you want, as much as you can, and write as many places as you possibly can. Get your byline and as many properties as you can because that's gonna look very impressive to hiring managers. It's also gonna allow you to learn more about <laughs> how different sites run things. Like Game Informer runs things very differently than CBS did. Um, there's almost nothing similar. Um, does that make it wrong? Absolutely not. But there are, very, there are a thousand different ways to do the same thing. And so by doing that, by many different properties, you're learning those different ways, which is going to give you a leg up. Because when you interview with these people, you can talk about those experiences and they're going to be impressed. They're going to be like, okay, this person is obviously really adaptable. They're able to take in information, process it, and apply it in a daily application. It's very important. So do that. And luck. <laughs> I would also advise uh, not just following journalists, <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm coming off of being sick, <coughs> journalists, but also PR people, um, also um, developers, studios. You want to know as much about this industry as you can. And you also need to let go of the notion that you know more than you actually do. There is so much to this industry that the public does not see. That's also why you see a lot of journalists get angry and frustrated with gamers trademark. Um, because you're getting a lot of backlash from people and you're getting people telling you how to do your job that don't understand the scope of the job and you get that enough and eventually your just patient snaps i get it um so don't you know don't just get rid of the note if you if you're in your head like well, i know everything and you kind of notice your behavior you're constantly correcting articles maybe look inwards a little bit and i'm not trying to belittle anybody by any means and i'm definitely not one of those that's like gamers because we are also gamers. <laughs> I don't like that dis distinction. I, I think that's kind of spiraled out in recent years. But to try to just let, you know, humble yourself a little bit, know that you have a lot to learn that is not available to public in the public space. Once you learn that, once you engage in that, really, I mean, Twitter is going to be your best friend. Twitter is the connection tool. Um, I have made the biggest changes in my career via Twitter interactions. Twitter is important. As much as that little fucking hell site sucks sometimes, it is very important. And not only are you going to follow people and you're going to put your name out there organically, you're also going to be seeing their interactions with, their with each other and you can learn more about how the processes work, how the, hier the, you know, the infrastructure works, the hierarchy, and who do I talk to? Well, no, you don't. oftentimes don't go right direct to the vet deb. Sometimes you do, but oftentimes you'll go through PR. And a lot of people that are interested in the industry don't understand what PR even is. <clears throat> but those are that's your conduit to a studio of choice. So this is going to help you learn more about that. Um, I would also say, um, and this is something, the reason I even brought up Don't Be the Gamers to begin with, was I would bring in a lot of writers and I would see some of the most bright-eyed, bushy-tailed people in the world come in. And they have goals, they have aspirations, and they have misconceptions that it's just playing games. And when they actually see the workload that goes into it and how on you have to be all the time, you have to be plugged in 24 seven, because not only do you have to know exactly everything that's going on in the world currently, you have to know what's going on that hasn't happened yet. And if that early access accessibility is not there, you have to have a, so much of an understanding in this industry that you're able to more often than not accurately predict what's gonna happen next so you can stay ahead of the curve. You have to be plugged in and engaged 24 seven and it does get exhausting. And I've had many writers, you know, two months in be like, I can't do this anymore. This is even just writing one article a day. We're like, it's too much. And that's because it's not for everybody. You know, I would love to be an astronaut. I can't, I have depth perception, like shit. It's shitty, shitty, shit, shit, shit. So I would love to be an astronaut. I will never be able to be an astronaut. Um, you gotta kind of go go within your skill set. So that brings me to my next point. If you find yourself in that position of I can't do this uh, anymore, um, sorry, work is coming up. Oh my god. Okay, good. <laughs> See, always plugged in. Uh, if you get to that point where you're like, oh wow, this is a lot more than I realized, or this is different than what I thought it was gonna be, 
don't just give up. There are other aspects. You could go the PR side. I have done PR in the past. It's a very stressful job at times, but also incredibly rewarding. Um, you can look into community management, or if you want to stay in media, but writing's not your shtick, take some time, take some, there's free classes online, watch some YouTube tutorials, teach yourself video, video editing and production. We, I don't know a single website that's not looking for a video producer. Um, video is where revenue is at its highest. It's where engagement is at its highest. Media, print media is get becoming more and more outdated. Online media is becoming more and more outdated as streamers and content creators become more in flux. So le learn that, teach that skill to yourself. That's a very valuable skill. Um, script writers, I wrote scripts for shows like IGN, Daily Fix. I would write scripts for stuff like that. Um, I didn't do that at IGN, I, disclaimer, that's just the most notable example that I can think of that people would be like, oh yeah, okay, I know what you're talking about. Um, it's, you know, learning scripts, learning how to put on paper an organic conversation that doesn't come off as really stilted. Uh, there's so many other options, like there's so many options and you'll learn more about those options by doing the earlier trick of get yourself a Twitter account, nice picture, a clear descriptor of who you are in the description on Twitter because there's a lot of times where people don't have anything there or it's a really stupid bio and that's your window of sell. So a lot of times I would have, when I was a hiring manager and I was a director of editorial at my previous lab occupation, um, I would have a lot of people reach out to me on Twitter like, I want a job, give me a job. And I would look at their Twitter profile and I would see like just middle fingers in, the, in their profile. No, my name's this, no, I like this, no, I do this, no, nothing like that. And to me, that's not the presenting face I want to have representing my property, you know what I mean? Is it a deal breaker? No, because we all post really offensive crap sometimes, um, but that's your first impression. So make it clear, make it professional uh, if you can, and that's gonna that's gonna help a lot. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of my biggest thing is, is write as much as you can, learn as much as you can, learn about things that you don't wanna write about. Um, I took a year off to write solely nothing but esports because that was an area that I had a very big blind spot in, and you really, in this industry, you cannot have a blind spot. And esports are growing at a rapid rate, even despite COVID, are still growing at a rapid rate. It is a billion dollar industry. Learn about it. Learn about PC gaming verticals. Learn about Xbox verticals. Learn about PlayStation verticals. There's so much to learn and to acclimate to. Learn everything. Just soak it up like a sponge. Now, one more tip. <laughs> one more tip, and this is actually a tip, um, and he's probably watching this, so hi, I'm not gonna say your name, but I, I really appreciated his reaction. So I had a person that was following me for a while and he's reached out before of like, hey, I would really like this, um, I would like a job opportunity. I'm interested in writing under you. And I would, you know, I would be like, oh, well, thank you. You know, let me see your resume. I'll look at it. Cause I don't want to just write somebody off. Like, let me see what you have to offer. <clears throat> but I was always very hesitant to set up an interview because this person became kind of infamous and this is what I got going back to earlier saying is it's a small industry, everybody talks. And he had a bad reputation of commenting on RGN articles, commenting on Game Informer articles, commenting on Prima articles, commenting basically on every website, correcting the article also incorrectly. So when you're correcting some, if you're correcting a professional, you need to make sure what you're correcting them with is actually true, not just what you think is true. So you need to do the research. Uh, but he would often correct us, um, and I would see it on other properties too, with incorrect information. So that shows me that you're not knowledgeable and you're not willing to acknowledge you're knowledgeable. And also you don't want to see people that don't know your friends attack your friends. You know, all uh, every journalist in this industry is interconnected, whether they're close friends or just acquaintances, doesn't matter. And we're very protective of each other because we do get a lot of crap. There's a lot of people and I have um, a video, I'm not going to go into it, but I have a video if you're interested, uh, women in gaming and the rage vape discussion. I go into all of it, um, but when you, you're constantly saying negative things and talking down to the people that are, are work you're critiquing, they remember. And I was like, I don't want to hire this person because when I announce that they're my writer, a lot of journalists are going to be like, what the fuck? Um, and I reached out because he mentioned again, he was like, you know, he was very tenacious, which you have to be. You have to make sure that people remember you. And he commented on something of mine. It was just really out of, way out of line um, to the point where I considered blocking him. And 
and I was like, do you have a moment? I would like, are you open to feedback? And he goes, yeah, of course. So I was like, let's, let's vote this in the DM. I'm not into public shaming. I'm not. That's why a lot of times when you see me speaking on issues, I'll often, unless it's a dangerous issue and it needs to be brought attention, I'll usually keep it pretty vague. Um, because I don't know what people, how people are going to take it. And I don't want to inadvertently be involved in, in targeted harassment. So I was like, DM me, let's talk. And I told him, I was like, look, we all know how you are with this. You've done this, this. And I pulled up examples. You've done this, 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 and this, and this. I don't want to hire you. You're a liability. And it, he could have been really defensive. And I will give him credit. And it changed. It almost did a 180 on my opinion of him. Of, you're right. I didn't even realize I was doing that. Thank you. And I have seen him. I've seen his interactions change. He's very thoughtful and now how he approaches people and he's helpful and he's just kind. Um, because sometimes you, you have to, instead of just assuming the worst about something, you have to know that sometimes people don't understand how they come off. We're all, we all have the ability to be toxic, whether uh, you know, meaning to or not. And um, I really appreciate that. But that's another form of advice that I would give is really be conscientious of your online presence because in this industry we are all very public facing your online presence is who you are perception is reality so make sure what you are putting out there for people to perceive is authentic to yourself and is not coming off in a way that you don't want to be perceived that's very big so that's what i would say when COVID's done i would also recommend if you can but i understand this is not a something that is available to everyone but if you can um and you know save some money put aside money out of every paycheck or however you need to do it and you know when everything is over invest in yourself go to e3 go to PAX, go to these events that you know journalists are at and you know hiring managers are at at websites you know where publications are at shake hands print out business cards with your information talk to as many people as you can packs hang out in the hotel lobbies that's all the, the hotel lobbies like the Westin and PAX East is nothing but developers and journalists so if you're looking to get into that industry go get yourself a drink there sit at the bar over your conversations you know it, observe the surroundings and if there's an organic entry point for you to involve yourself do it don't force yourself into a situation that's gonna make people feel uncomfortable but if you find an, an organic way to insert yourself, do it. You owe it to yourself to do that. Um, invest in yourself. As much visibility, and that kind of ties into the luck thing too. Visibility is going to up those luck chances, that luck stat, immensely. So that's what I would say. I would say look at different aspects of media. It's not just writing. It's not just game reviews. It's not just guide writing. See what fits what you're looking for and just start. Stop thinking about it. Just start. You know, follow the people that inspire you. Reach out for possible mentorships. I will also let you guys know when I'm opening up mentorships again. Um, and just just start because you can't pursue something that hasn't even been started yet. So I hope this video was helpful in any ways. I'm, I, in my head, I'm thinking like, bitch, you're forgetting something very important. I can't for the life of me think of what it is though. I'm very tired and it's been a very rough week. Um, but if I, if I miss something or if you have need of further clarifications, drop a comment in the comment section below and I will, I will address that. You guys already see that I, I see in the replied comments. I don't know how to not converse with people. I'm lonely. I'm in quarantine still. Okay. Um, but yeah, hopefully this helped out um, and answered some of the questions you might have. And uh, thank you for watching the video. If you like my shit, um, hit that subscribe button. I would love to hit a thousand um, here soon so I can change the name of my channel. Uh, but yeah, hit me up. Let me know if you need any clarification or anything like that. And uh, yeah, I will catch you guys next time. Bye.